back on the Gold Coast again with the $3,000 electric van rebuild. We've got hundreds of new subscribers from this, so I'm going to run you through from the beginning. Uh, he bought a van. We paid 3000 bucks for it. Uh, all the batteries, which you can see underneath the car at the moment, were 0 0.6 volts when we bought it. Through a waterfall of very small faults, and literally a waterfall uh, through this vent, it got into the controllers and stuff inside the engine bay, shorted out the battery and BMS, uh, did a whole heap of other nasty things like as a result of that. And that battery there we fixed last weekend because that cell there got bloated. What are we doing at the moment? We are charging it. It's all back up and running. We've got the battery there, the one we rebuilt. Uh, and it's charging, it's sort of turning on and off. It's almost fully charged. 0 0.8 amps, 0 0.9 amps. And the battery and BMS is controlling that charge. So it's not overcharging the battery and it's leveling them off at the moment. So if you watch that for long enough, you'll actually see it drops all the way to zero volts and can get up to like three amps occasionally as well. So the battery and BMS over here and we saw it was 0.9 of an amp. So it's only just charging the batteries a little bit. The top cell is 3.66 volts and the bottom is 3.37 volts. And we had an issue with wiring causing that one to discharge all the time. So we replaced the long one on the, the cell monitor on that cell and it's just balancing itself back out again. The plan today is to put the batteries back into the car and drive it down the road or create more content because we screwed something up again. Let's do this. What an absolute ass about mounting system. We've got a bolt up here and the bolt goes through the frame rail and how they got it into the frame rail is beyond me. So it comes down and then they've got another bolt in between the frame and the actual box itself and then they've got the bolt right there. What a nightmare setup. Um, the nut on the other side keeps loosening up when you tighten this one up and it like binds or something and it undoes the, the nut. Um, it's the same on the other side here. But one in, three to go. I won't force you to watch those. Back under the car and I thought it was time to give you a bit of an update on how these, uh, these batteries are mounted. Uh, Big old bolt there. And again, I don't know what was done when it was new, but it looks like a gigantic nut with a smaller nut on top of it there. Um, all the welds or all the grinding is still all bare. And I know you're upside down. Looks like they ground underneath it when it was done and not gave it any protection. There's a couple of nuts. They am hanging upside down, I'm sorry. I'll try and turn the phone around that's on the actual bar itself it just bolted through there but what I brought you under here to show you was this bit yes ladies and gentlemen that's pop riveted on what sort of crazy when you've got access to the back of it you can just put a bolt in you would consider that that was an option what's worse is that one on that side which i can't tell you from here you can see the pop rivet on this side is almost snapped off and there's only one rivet holding that side on but that that's not the only screw that's not the only mounting point there's another mounting point just here and then here and then here and then similarly on the rail over that side so it's only one out of eight but still well, tubers, we are about three hours after my last update. It's probably not that long, but it certainly feels that long. And the fuckery continues. Look at that. Nice big hole. It used to look like that little bolt there. Right, where's my hand? Right there. And the way they got it to fit, so it lined up with that hole, was fun. Check this out. So what they've done is they've put a bolt through bolt through the hole they've cut half of the bolt or a quarter of the bolt off so it sits against that flat edge and then simply added a nut underneath it to hold it all on and act as a spacer and um i got the agadaga and put about three dozen too many agadagas into it and it just tore it out uh my brother struggled through the week to put all the batteries back in um, unfortunately I wasn't here 
so I didn't get any footage of getting the batteries back in, but they're all back in. So we are good to go. We've fixed a couple of mounts. Um, just lifted a bit of the wiring up a little bit higher. So there's nothing dropping down below the base of the car or below the base of the batteries. So pretty cool. Um, that motor, that gearbox, something vibrates when you take your foot off the clutch or pr rather put your foot on the clutch to change gears, the motor doesn't spool down. I believe there's something you can change to make that work better. And we'll look into that, but it's very, very weird when you stop at a set of traffic lights and the motor's still spooling down and it, and it, it, it vibrates. It vibrates more than I'm comfortable with, but it does appear to work well enough. However, extremely underpowered, very underpowered. We've got the bait trim down here. She's all set up and ready to go. We've got the shunt hooked up. We can see it doing negative three amps, just sitting here idle. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the voltage hooked up because that box down there, turn around gimbal, that box down there has the shut off halfway through the battery bank. So we've got to work out when we might have to put the shunt up into the engine bay. But hopefully, Alan, but hopefully it reads everything right. Look at the dash light lit up a bit there. We've done a little bit of work to the dash. We still have a little bit more to do. But it's time for a test drive. Three amps and the bait trim up there on the actual head unit. Oh yeah, first drive. Here we go. That shutter is... That doesn't sound good. That's just because it's been sitting for so long. It sounds like something's vibrating underneath it. Hear it before. I wonder if it's the cables that we just pushed back down here a little bit. It's gonna be a mess. Yes. Yes, it would be definitely those. Okay, I'll try again. Hey look, we solved the problem. So what do they call that's the spit out there on the Gold Coast, isn't it? That's the board. Board surroundings. Gold Coast. I have to admit it's a terrible place to be to be working.
We're at a public charger and we've just realized that the actual bait room, which is very, very securely attached there, is controlling the charge at the moment, about four amps, which is fine because this was just a test. So we're doing, um, the shunt amps is about five and a half amps. I don't know the maths. Uh, and around this side, we are parked beside a Tesla with, um, it's parked in an EV spot and it's not charging. And then we've got another one over there that's parked in an EV spot that's not even an EV. Welcome to our world. Um, we've been charging for three minutes. This is just a proof of concept. We've got our own cable and it's plugged into the car and it's charging at a public station. Be it slowly, very, very slowly, it's still possible, which is kind of a really good feeling. Just changed some settings. We've gone current to 20 amps. So if we go back, chart. So we're doing four amps for four. Ah, now it's doing 20 amps, giddy up. Right out, let's have a look at the charging station. And now it's doing 13 amps. I still don't know how long that's going to take to charge, but hey, at least it's working. I think I'm in love with this car again. Still doing 20 amps, but this is a short charge. We've got to go home and do some more work. And by love, what I really mean is lust. And when I said I had to drive home, it's been driven home. It made it the whole, I think it's 80 to 100 kilometers from his house to my house. I've never really looked, but it made it here. It did it in one charge. We did not have to resort to a generator, which is in the back of the van, uh, just in case we didn't know whether we'd make it or not. Now the car's still doing a full balance charge for a top charge. It hasn't had that properly yet because we couldn't, it was impractical to take every battery out. So the Batrium, the Batrium is working hard at the moment. Uh, we got the, the generator just there. <laughs> Uh, so we're working on a top balance, but I did get a, um, a time lapse of the Batrium screen driving down here and you can see the amps going up and down. You can see when it's regening and stuff like that. It uses about three amps when it's turned on and idle. It uses almost one amp when it's sitting there turned off. Um, and then on the way down here, he got about five kilometers from home and the van started cutting out. So it cut out two or three times in a lower gear. I don't know whether it was over revving or over amps, but that's what I'm gonna try and sort out today or rather right now. So in the next video, we will do a range test. And in fact, I'm leaving right now to go and do it. I want you to put in the comment section of this video, what you think the range will be. Uh, it's not going to be, I'm not going to go until dead. I don't want to get stranded somewhere. I don't have the, I, I, don't, I don't have the need to sit on the side of the road and wait for the generator to charge it up a bit or get a tow truck. So it'll be a, a useful range test, a, a practical range test. Leave it in the comments below. And if you made it this far, smash the like button, do all the things because I'm using more fuel to go to the coast and back again than I'm making on YouTube these days. So do the thing, see you later. I'll see you on the next one.